Hi, Dave here and this is a new episode in the Art Review series and today we're going to review the work of Greg Rutkowski. Um, he's based in Piensk, Poland. Um, freelance illustrator and concept artist. Um, although I think based on his work, he's more of an illustrator because um, he does bring his works or his paintings to a more finished level. Um, I mean, he does a lot of sketches as well, like painted sketches, but I think his work is just so presentable, <laughs> you know, and it's something that could become a print or something. And I think if something can be come uh, a print, it's more of an illustration than something for design, you know. And uh, so, yeah, let's proceed with his work. I did pick out some of his most interesting work. Um, he does have a very impressionistic <laughs> style, which I deeply am in love with. Uh, and you'll notice he does use a lot of oil-like brushes. I mean, he does sell a few. Um, I do recommend you check out his. He does have a YouTube channel. He also has a Gumroad. And uh, uh, yes, um, I'll be providing the links of Greg in the description below. And as you can see for his oil brushes, he does bring out or turn on the color dynamics. And I think I first learned to uh, use that option in the brush options or so brush settings, brush settings options. <laughs> it does make it a bit more painterly and kind of more textured, more packed. Um, it makes your kind of paint stroke look a bit um, thicker. Um, and he does a lot of these studies, these, these sort of uh, painted studies. And I think he takes a lot away in terms of the, the lessons. Um, he does sometimes, uh, for example, this one is more of a, I'm more attracted to this kind of style. It's not super fine. Um, it's very, again, impressionistic, very, you can see a lot of the brush strokes and it's not super clean, which I do like. And um, maybe he's very influenced with more I'm not sure if it does have a background with traditional mediums, but I can tell that his work does look a bit more natural. Um, he can make it look kind of natural. And uh, so maybe he's not necessarily a traditional painter, but he does know how to give the same essence. And he does have a thing for dragons. Um, his work is mostly more concentrated on fantasy types of artwork. And I think it does a lot of work for um, Magic the Gathering. He does employ a few uh, photo bashing often, sometimes, if it's uh, if it concerns the architecture. Um, I did buy a few of his tutorials. Um, he does have a free brush pack, I think. Uh, so do, I do recommend you check out his Gumroad or his art station. Um, uh, just had a sip of coffee. And uh, I like how it goes sharper. He does bring his work to a crisper. Um, level maybe he does he does sharpen his work I think in the end once he's actually done painting and uh, here I think he does use some photos maybe as a base but he does paint over it a lot it's almost impossible to tell given his kind of style and approach um I do like seeing a lot of his brush spacing um he does leave it off or on and the moment he does sharpen it you'll notice whenever you leave out or you have a brush that's kind of spaced out, the moment you sharpen that image, it does add a bit of a rough texture and it's actually pretty cool. So I do recommend you try just spacing out some of your brushes, um, trying to increase the brush spacing, you know, in between. Um, it does have a nice effect to it. And even though it looks digital, the fact that it does have a rough look makes it look a bit more natural. Um, so same concept based on the recent piece. Um, and again, you can see, I'm not sure how he uses the smudge. Maybe he does use some smudge tools. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I need to check back again on his, uh, tutorials and shit. Uh, but again, in the end, in the end, his work still looks very, uh, painterly. And for example, this is one of his studies. Very interesting. I mean, look at that brush spacing right there. Um, and because it's kind of sharpened in the end, it looks very, very nice and crisp. And uh, it does look like an actual painting if you zoom away. Um, <laughs> I just zoomed in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you kind of see it from afar, it does look a bit more of a natural painting. And I think that's how he sees his work. I think he's more of a painter 
than the type of guy that does a lot of like layering, say compared to John Park or Jordan Grimmer. Um, but he is more painterly, very similar to John Park um, in that they're both kind of painterly. They have a painterly kind of look. Um, this one's actually finely, a very fine type of illustration. You'll notice in the ends of the limbs, it tends to be not, it tends to be a bit more loose, which makes sense because obviously this is the, the main focus. And look at how fine it is. Um, it looks a bit way more rendered, way more defined. Um, and this is obviously an illustration, something that's uh, very printable, publishable. Um, I mean, it's still concept art, but it's, it's more on the high-end type of stuff for marketing and shit. Um, oh, another study. I mean, look at that. It looks very, very natural. Um, I like the very playfulness. <laughs> the very playful, the, the playfulness that happens um, whenever he paints. And he does employ a lot of textures. I think these come off, or it's, it's kind of part of his actual brushes. So that's kind of nice. Um, maybe he does use some mixer brushes. Although I don't see it a lot. Maybe a bit, but he doesn't overdo it because... Um, I've recently been trying to uh, apply more of the mixer brush in my own process and I often kind of overdo it and eventually my my work kind of ends up being a bit too blurry because of that but uh, yeah I do like the fact that it's a bit crunchy you know Greg Rutkowski's uh, work um, another city study I mean look at the way he simplified the cityscape with just a few simple brush strokes and the color dynamics really d does help so you have to find kind of the right setting for you uh, to kind of get off the texture you actually want to achieve. So just play around with the settings. I do recommend I I, I do recommend you uh, download his uh, or buy his uh, brush pack. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, they're cool. Although I did make mine on my own, but uh, I still recommend you try out his brushes because they're actually kind of cool looking, and um, you can actually learn a lot from just uh, playing around with his with with his brushes. And uh, well, he does maybe use a bit of the mixer brush here, just a bit here. You can see it, okay. But again, he doesn't overdo it. That's why his work still looks uh, quite crispy in the end. And uh, I like how a lot of his brushes have that kind of canvas texture, and you can even see it here. You can see a lot of the color dynamics on some mixer brush use. And uh, again, he, it, this area is obviously the area of focus. And maybe, I'm not sure if he did use 3D for this part. Or maybe it's just painted, fuck. Um, but it's kind of too tight. I mean, it's good for an illustration, but uh, this one scares me. Because <laughs> I I'm, I feel like I'm more of the, the very sketchy kind of guy. And this is kind of intimidating, this part right here. And notice how we simplify the trees in the back. And again, in the ends of the limbs, it does get simpler. Um, Maybe he did use some grass brushes here. I think so. Um, I believe this is a frame from a film. But it does look very um, natural, right? I mean, look at the amount of it. It actually looks like an oil painting, right? Very, very impressive. The way he can achieve that look. And look at the amount of texture in this bitch. Um, maybe a smudge tool? Not sure. Um, but I like how his work still ends up being consistent. Like, uh, it's not, um, he doesn't use a lot of brushes or his work doesn't end up looking like, um, say Craig Mullen's work where it's, it does have a lot of brush variety. Um, his brushes do have a theme or his brushwork does have a theme, very oily types, um, of brushes, very impressionistic. Um, he's not super clean with his edges. Um, well, not always, but, uh. Now this one is actually a pretty fine illustration. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, I think his more natural kind of style, you can see it in the background and in the, the kind of floor. But this character is a bit too fine for me. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's a bit too finely rendered. I mean, it's not bad, but uh, I think I'm just a kind of a... I do have a lean. I do like this more painterly stuff, but he can push it further to a more finished very fine looking um level <laughs> and it of the fire effects maybe he does use a few photo textures but uh, again he was able to achieve that kind of fiery look right very hot um 
And again, a lot of textures everywhere. Um, um, so I believe this is Godzilla and the uh, the kind of pterodactyl kind of thing. Um, Wizards of the Coast. What the fuck is that? Um, I have no idea. Um, oh, look at the way he simplified the uh, well the creatures, but this kind of skeleton right here. It's essentially just a big silhouette, and then he just painted the uh, the light parts in, and then just added a bit more value variation to kind of uh, suggest some kind of form, um, so it doesn't look too graphical, right? And even the way he did these um, branches or this these sort of vines or yeah, I mean very big. I, I think he does use layers. It's not that he doesn't use layers, but uh, uh, he doesn't overdo it. Well, maybe that's not the word. Um, he, his work still feels more blended. Um, he, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right, but um, oh, oh. Mm. Okay, this actually reminds me of the scene in uh, The Mandalorian. I think the first episode of season 2. There's this kind of a worm thingy. Uh, but obviously, this is more of a dragon thing. Uh, maybe some demon shit right here. Uh, I love the way he was able to portray the kind of explosion right here. While still being able to uh, keep it very painterly. Um, you can see a lot of the color, dyna color dynamics again in the background. Uh, some photo textures you can, you can tell. Um, even in the, these rocks are photo textures, but he obviously painted over them to kind of make it more um, blended, right? But in the end, if you kind of look at it all together, it looks kind of very cohesive um, and again very presentable. Um, even his sketches look very presentable. Oh my god! Look at the amount of beauty in this piece. Um, the folds, very well done, um, right here. And look at the amount of texture, that's what's... It fascinates me how he achieves this kind of, uh, this very kind of natural look. I do believe these come off of his actual brushes, excuse me. And a lot of his brushes have different textures, and if you combine all... Oh shit, sorry about that. If you combine all of them together, it looks very, very, uh, interesting. And here you can even see some of that brush spacing, um, which is cool. Again, once you actually sharpen it in the end, once you're done painting, it looks very, very, uh, right here, very cool. Um, and a lot of hue variety in this work. It's not very boring. Um, even though his colors are, obviously this piece is more on the, the warmer side, right? Um, you can see a lot of blues some greens right here, blues, reds, um, oranges, um, so there's a bit of everything in this um, painting when it comes to hues. Now this one is a bit more finely rendered. This actually looks more like a gouache painting because um, I don't see a lot of the the color dynamics. And I guess this depends on his, the project he's working on. I, I believe when he's working on this project, Wizards of the Coast thingy, um, his work tends to be a bit more refined and not as textured. Uh, not a lot of color dynamics, not a lot of like big painterly strokes, um, not a lot of blending. Very, very almost gouache-like. Um, still looks cool though, I love the face. Um, very smug look. Um, oof, again with the dragons. Jesus. I, I think he has the experience to paint fire in a very kind of presentable way. Um, <laughs> and even smoke. Um, I think he just painted it. Maybe he does have a few smoke brushes or cloud brushes to help, but uh, I think most of it is just him painting it. Um, yeah. And I actually, oh, this part of the wing right here, and even this wing, it's a bit simplified. Not a lot of texture compared to this area right here. It's a bit sharper, more defined. Makes more sense because obviously, again, this is the body and this is the head so obviously even the head is going to be a bit more detailed and i love how he was able to kind of reflect the the fire light sources here onto the skin even on the wings Ooh, fuck very epic um maybe i should definitely review his tutorials again and just kind of rewatch it kind of learn again um this one doesn't have a lot of view variety it's actually again very gouache like um 
but it's still very painterly, right? Here it does have a bit more texture in this kind of red outfit. Um, look at how he just simplified the, the fingers of the skeleton thingy um, with a few brush strokes. So that's definitely being efficient. Um, even the background isn't as detailed. Uh, makes sense. This could be some kind of photo texture. The bricks thingy, uh, you can tell. Um, now this one is actually pretty fucking impressive. Um, I'm pretty sure he did use some photo textures here. I mean, but he was able to blend it in such a way. I still think he painted most of it. Um, I think he did paint most of it, right? But it actually looks like a natural painting. Um, and look at how crisp it is. Even these trees. Yeah, these are fucking photos. Um, but he was able to paint over it, kind of blend it well together. And it almost... Nothing is kind of out of place. You know what I mean? Um, everything just fits. Ooh, I like this kind of a uh, dash of light here in the center. Ooh. And the rest is kind of in shadow, and kind of bluish. Ooh. And look at the amount of figures in this uh, bitch. I mean, that's a lot of people to paint, right? And they're even kind of... Shit, they all have like folds and shit. Fuck. I'm not sure if he worked on this by himself. Or maybe he had like help. But, uh, fuck. Fuck my life. Oh, again, I think this is of the same project. Uh, very Victorian kind of. Victorian? Victorian? Um. Oh shit, sorry about that. Um. And uh, same thing here. I think he did use a few photos to kind of help out with the, the textures and shit. Um, but it's a very complicated piece. Uh, very impressive actually. And uh, lots of colors. Lots of variety. Very tight though. Um, but again, it still kind of looks painterly in the end. So that's kind of uh, impressive. Ooh! Uh, I think he did use textures for the bricks here, but most of it I think is still painted. Um, and look at how this area right here with, with this kind of knight and the kind of flag is the main focus. The flag does have a bit more contrast, including the, the actual kind of knight with the horse. And I mean, look at the dragon though. <sighs> and I think he did use a lot of mixer brushes here in the end. And... Uh, I like how he focuses his painting on the... Like, he's not afraid to keep it kind of blended out on areas that aren't as important or that aren't in focus. Um, and I think it's a very efficient way of painting. You don't have to paint every single fucking thing in your uh, painting. Or you could just suggest it, right? And I think it adds a very kind of artistic sense of... um, Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, dead bodies? I think. A dead fucking horse. Oh, poor thing. Poor thing. Anyway. Oh, another one of these, um... Illustrations. Um... And again, it, it's essentially a silhouette, but he does paint further in this area. Um... Very creative, because obviously everything here is in shadow, right? And I believe it's kind of set in the sunset, or sunrise, and you can see this dash of light. And this glorious kind of animal. Humanoid tree is just um walking out and about um uh, the, oh i actually thought this was kind of an assassin's creed kind of thing maybe um i'm not, I'm not sure <laughs> but this actually this part right here feels a bit too smooth um i did not expect that from him um actually if you focus on the background on this area it's a bit sharper more textured compared to this area, so that's kind of putting me off. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still a nice painting, but it it's not too similar to his normal types of shit. I mean, if you crop this area out, I think that would be more of his kind of thing. Um, but you know, hey, maybe it depends on the the project or something. Ooh, not sure if this was a study or something. Um, but fuck. Looks like an actual oil painting to me. I love the way he illustrated that sunset, right? And even the boats in the foreground. Very Venice kind of area, maybe. 
I feel. Another one of his studies, I mean, look at the way he handled the foreground. Very, very just, um, a la prima. You know what? I have no idea what the word actually means, but I've, <laughs> but, uh, I've heard like oil painters usually use that word, um, or the term a la prima. Um, I think it means quick painting. Fuck. Uh, don't hold me to that. Um, oh, look at the amount of like a uh, texture here. It's almost as if it's um like there was some kind of palette knife use um again this probably comes off of his um specific individual brushes and kind of combined they look very 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 interesting um fuck 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 fuck, fuck. oh <sighs> this guy's fucking dead <laughs> Um, very kind of snake-like dragon face. Um, oh, I love the complementary thing going on here. You see this blue? Oh wait, you see this kind of warm red? Very cool, but hot blue. And then red, and then blue. Um, this maybe moonlight is in the back or something. Um, you can even see it in some of the rocks. And there's this nice kind of back and forth complementary thing going on. And in the center, you can see this blue kind of cool part. Wow, very, very creative. Very, very creative. I think these are photo textures. I mean, come on. These are photo textures. Obviously, he does paint over it to make it more kind of uh, fit, more natural, and more kind of uh, together, right? But fuck, this guy's fucking dead. The dragon has the high ground. Oh, fucking Christ. Oh, aquatic shit. Oh, you can see even some homes and shit. Like houses, I think. I think so. Mm, at least is what I... Or what it looks like to me. Um, I love the kind of eerie, kind of mysterious feeling. Right? And I love the way he was able to reflect the uh, the kind of reflections. Ah, oh, no shit. <laughs> of the water onto the skin. These sorts of kind of uh, cyan types of... Uh, patterns. That uh, emanate from the the surface of the water, right? Very, very nice. And I think he was he did a good job in capturing that kind of underwater um, atmosphere. Because I did a few underwater pieces, and I don't, I don't think I was able to get anything to this kind of level. So, and I love the sense of scale. Look at this ship and these sort of creatures or fish or school of fish, right? Whoa, fuck. Look at the sharpness of the mouth. Very painterly, but very... It's not like overly kind of uh, blended out. Like overly painted. Or kind of uh, too mixed. Um, it's a bit tight in some areas. Here you can see him kind of fade it out a bit. And I think that helps to make it a bit more art artsy. And also helps with the atmosphere, right? But it does get tighter in some areas. Um, I think he just focuses more on the silhouette and just making sure... It's right, and then he's pretty much done. Um, he'll just kind of, uh, oh, look at that dash of yellow or red or pink. Whoa, fuck. Fuck a root. Is it Joanne? Joanne of Arc? I'm not sure. Um, like, what is this Wizards of Coast thing? Wizards of the Coast? What the fuck is that? Um, so, some kind of dog jaguar thingy, and the beautiful night. Um, ah! Oh, I love the fucking cape, though. And again, he was able to mix this part a bit. And I love the way he suggested some of the knights in the back. Um, whoa, this thing's fucking badass. And again, very crisp look. Um, this one's oh, a bit too detailed. I mean, it's, it's not... When I say too detailed, it doesn't mean it's bad. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh shit. Oh, I love how he just left the, the other kind of creatures um, in kind of silhouette form. And he did spend most of his time rendering. I mean, this is a very rendered kind of piece, right? Oof. Fucking jacked as fuck. Oh, look at this area right here. He just left it as it is. As it is, right? Just a silhouette. And um, it's a great way to save time. Um, usually when things are in light, they're obviously going to be a bit more detailed, more rendered more rendered because obviously they're in light um, but when something is in shadow you can kind of just ignore it right and just kind of uh yeah fuck it's very tight though 
um damn look at those biceps very nice muscle mu muscle muscle insertions um because i do have like a gap in this kind of area right here so i don't have like the best the perfect kind of genetics but fuck even them quads or oh, the quads need some work you gotta you gotta squat those shoulders though jeez those delts fuck fucking ripped oh hoo -hoo. Now, this one is a bit sharper this one is more of my thing i'm very attracted to this kind of uh, approach very painterly very uh textured um Mm. Mm. I love the way he uh, did the, the kind of light area here with the clouds and how he was able to portray a kind of sunset. Um, and obviously it's kind of a, it's kind of a stormy, windy kind of time. You can tell by, by the waves, the, the white kind of stuff. Ooh. And uh, yeah, so this guy is just kind of watching the sunset or sunrise. Um, very, very interesting piece. And it's really just to main kind of hues the reds and the or well yeah the reds or orange and the blues um so warm and cool warm cool so there's cool warm cool cool warm cool right oh so these are uh maybe he did use a photo here um because the silhouette the hat is kind of putting me off it's kind of like a construction helmet so that's kind of a uh, weird so this guy is so is this gold or something maybe and this chick oh this chick is just in a very interesting position <laughs> some oh this 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 is obviously some photo texture right here um and then he just uh painted over it to kind of help it blend um very very ingenious not ingenious but a traditional way of uh saving time when it comes to concept art Oh, this one's very, very uh, sharp, very almost kind of like Van Gogh. Van Gogh, <laughs> um, right? I mean, it's not overly like you know, like um, stimulating in that there's so many hues. It's very simple. You've got a kind of a white here, and then you've got blues and yellows or orange essentially. Um, very. I think this is a study of a street. Very simple, but very kind of. I think this is a smudge tool right here. Um, oh. Ooh la la. Damn fierce. <laughs> oh, look at that smoke. Kind of in, be in between the uh, the legs and shit. Um, and again, he did keep the, the... I love the way he did the environments in the background. Very simple. It's almost watercolor-like in a way. In terms of how it's done. It's uh, kind of a light blue plus a yellow right um very nice complimentary thing going on in terms of temperature and maybe that's a common theme in his work he does like to uh bring some blues and yellows or cools and warms and uh you can see this kind of nice um, battle between the two sides the dark side of the force plus the light side uh, the cool side and warm side um warm cool warm cool the eyes are warm. Whoa, you see that? Kind of back and forth thing going on. Holy fuck. <laughs> um, let's move it on. Okay, so this is more of a study. Um, and I think this is... You can see more of the brush strokes. Maybe he did have a bigger brush. Um, very interesting. I love the way he was able to manage this kind of chaos. And I think the brush spacing does actually help with the... Kind of suggesting the, the water stuff, right? very very cool way of uh doing that right oh oh this is one of my favorites of his it's kind of a sketch but look at it's just magnifique <laughs> um and again his sketches look very presentable um painted oh very big brush here lots of brush spacing and very efficient with the brush strokes. It's not like wasting time, because that's usually what I do. Waste time. <laughs> ah, and his kind of shapes, like his main silhouette shapes, the main kind of forms. Very, very kind of clean, very clear. Um, so it's going to have a bit more impact. 
Look at the way he handled the holes in the wings. So this guy has been through quite a few fights or something. Um, again, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm. Okay. Oh, another study. I think this was based on a photo. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, very, oh, I think he did use a mixer brush here or something. Um, very, oh, he did use some cool sp stuff here. He did use more greens in the bottom, in this corner, some purples here. This one does have a bit more hue variety, which I do like seeing. Um, it makes it look more lively, and, um, I think if you diversify your hues and just, uh, represent every color. <laughs> Rubbish! Um, it's going to look a bit more interesting. And again, very sharp. Um, great study though. Fuck. Ah, look at that kind of uh, highlight he did in the end. I mean, that's just being, a bit, you know, confident, right? That's like the artist version of the money shot. Oh! <laughs> I believe he entitled this one Freedom, um, which we're actually lacking today, but... <laughs> oh, oh, okay. This, is, this doesn't seem like a digital painting to me, which is very, very impressive. And even the way it's kind of painted, um, uh, it's not like... Um, you know how a lot of concept artists nowadays um, they tend to have a bit of a c cinematographic kind of feel where they're very good with the, the keyframes, with creating like storyboards or essentially painted storyboards, right? This one isn't that. It's more of a kind of a traditional painting, you know? It's something you would put in a... Um, maybe in some kind of a Bilderberg meeting. <laughs> I don't know. Oh! I actually, oh, okay. So this one is a bit finer, and you can tell uh, a lot of his projects in this concerning this concept is a bit tight. Again, it's not bad, but uh, you know, I wanted, I want, I like seeing more painterly stuff. It is painterly, however, um, it's a bit too perfect, you know? Like, if someone doesn't have a scar, I tend to like freak out, like, where have you been, you know? It, it just puts you off, but. If you see like a study like this or a painting like this, it shows the human aspect, right? The energy, you know, of being a human being and the kind of chaos that comes with uh, life, right? I actually think this is Cersei. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but look at how sharp this bad bitch is. I love the brush strokes here. Um, and even the textures, I, I, I still think he doesn't, uh, I don't think it does it kind of after where he puts or overlays the texture. I think it just comes off of his actual brushes. So, very, very interesting. I mean, very majestic. I believe this is a study um, of Cersei, I think. I think. Oh, this is actually me right now with my long hair. Whoa, very majestic and... Uh, I wish I was actually close to a beach. Um, I mean, we do have sand he sand here in New Mexico, but um, it's so dead. I mean, I like it here. It's kind of quiet and silent, but uh, you know, lots of radiation though. <laughs> this actually feels like um, shit. John Singer Sargent. I'm kind of feeling the essence in this painting, or his presence, his force in this um, painting. Right? A bit? Oh, you can actually see a lot of the, the color dynamics here in the bottom, right? Ooh, holy fucking Christ. Again, it does have or add a bit of um, a thickness to the, the paint strokes. You can see it here, you can see it here. And it, it, it does make it look slightly flat, um, but that's okay. Just make sure you play well with the values and you'll essentially be fine. And you'll be able to suggest suggest some kind of depth. Um, so don't worry if it becomes kind of too flat. Because, um, yeah. Just make sure your values are right and you can kind of uh, 
create some depth. Um, okay. Oh. So this one here is a bit tighter, very defined. Um, I love how he just made the rest of this kind of dragon a silhouette and focused more of his um, painting here. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, oh, this is very similar to his, um, let's find it. It's somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. Maybe he did paint over this somehow. Very, very interesting. Um, oh, another study, environment study. Um, yeah, I love the colors. Oh, look at that slight bit of variation of hues here. Warms and blues, or warms and cools. Uh, I'm not sure how, it doesn't seem like he painted it with the, with his more oily types of brushes. Um, brushes. Um, not a lot of color dy dynamics here. I think it's very vague. You can't, it's hard to see because it's kind of too light, but uh, there is some kind of slight variation there. Hopefully you can see, you can see it here, but, um, okay, let's move on. Oh, this is a very epic scene. Wow. Very kind of Lord of the Rings kind of, um, feels. Holy shit, Greg, what the fuck? Christ. Um, I mean, he had to have used some kind of, uh, photos. Right? Maybe I'm pretty sure he did. Um, but the uh, fuck. Even this dragon is essentially left as a silhouette. I mean, you can see the kind of eye here and this side of the wing, but uh, look at how there is atmosphere in this painting. Like, you can see it from here going through here. Like, it feels like a big fucking thing, right? And, um, I don't know, it just feels epic. Not much to say, but fuck. <laughs> oh, look at the dash of light here. And then fire. And then rah! Whoa! Ho ho ho! Oh, I think he does have a few of these, oh, although... Uh, well, 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 first of all, they're actually kind of cool. I'm um, very sketchy, very char charcoal-like. But there is this Chinese um, artist. Um, he does a lot of these sorts of uh, charcoal-like paintings or studies. And um, I'm pretty sure, or maybe Greg kind of got inspired by that. Because uh, there is this one guy that paints a certain kind of way whenever he does like point portraits. This Chinese, I think it's Chinese. Um... And it does have kind of the same feeling. And again, look at that brush spacing. I used to think this thing was bad and it kind of like detracted from the painting or it kind of um, was kind of uh, like it was bad for a painting or study or any kind of digital art. But um, I've actually grown into it and it does have an appeal, you know. So, yeah. I love it. I love how it gets sharper here. And then in the end, kind of just fades. Very charcoal-esque. Um, even the ear, you can see some light here, and then this whole thing is kind of just in silhouette, almost blended out, right? Um, look at that facial structure, very, very realistic way of painting, um, or suggesting the forms. Very nice smile, right? On Nietzsche. This one actually feels like a traditional painting as well. Um, oh, big brush here. Oh. I think this is one of the covers of his brush pack. I do recommend you... Oh, mixer brush right here. I do recommend you try out his uh, brush packs. Very, very interesting um, looking brushes. Um, fuck. Very impressive as fuck. I think this is some kind of study. Oh, he also likes Western stuff. I think he's heavily inf influenced by um, Western types of films. Very old ones, I think. Wow, look at that. Um, the the shadows are kind of reddish, purple red. Um, I love how he did the sky. Very just big brush strokes. Very just blah, you know. Very confident. Um, even the horse is kind of realistic in a way. 
and look at the amount of values in each kind of form, right? Look at how we handle the uh, the folds here, the drapery, right? Fuck, a very very impressive. And oh, we have this lady right here. I believe this is also a study. Look at the way. Again, warms and cools, right? Nice complimentary thing going on. Um, nice thing in between this kind of warm thing. It's kind of an in between thing. <laughs> um, very nice. And he does have that canvas texture in a lot of his brushes. And I think that's what's actually that it helps to make his paintings look a bit more natural. Um, I do have a few in some of my own brushes, but I think he has like way, way, way more than mine. Um, look at how he didn't have to define the edge too much in this kind of column. Um, he did define this edge right here in light, but this kind of part right here, it's just very kind of, uh, maybe he did use the mixer brush. But look at the amount of hues as well in the column. You can actually see some blues and greens or cyans, right? Greens, right? Or some purples here. Whoa. Whoa ho, ho. Very efficient way of painting and very, very kind of a uh, top tier. I believe this is based off of an old film. Maybe. I don't know. Look at how we handle the, uh, the drapery. Very efficient. Even the horses. It's essentially a silhouette, but it looks very realistic, right? Uh, th this horse right here actually reminds me of the girlfriend of, um, maybe you're, you guys are familiar with the, I think it's a Disney film, Stallion of the uh, something. Um, fuck. It was a horse film. Um, and he had like a, a Native American friend, you know, and he had like a, a horse girlfriend, but had a cow that had a cow like kind of skin. Fuck. Oh, more knights. Very more fantasy types of stuff. Um, I love the way he simplified the background and even the grass. Very, very interesting. Um, it gets it gets tighter here. Obviously, you can even see the dash of color dynamics. Ugh. Fuck. The way he simplified the face of the the horse. Um, not a lot of like. It's not overly rendered. It's almost like gouache like. Um, yeah, it is kind of gouache, like where it's heavy on the shapes, not too much on the blending, which I think, hmm, which I, I may lean to more, perhaps. Um, the face gets tighter a bit, well, not too much, but enough. Um, very evened out painting where it's not, uh, he did simplify this back leg and this other back leg, right, a bit. But it's kind of evened out. Nothing is kind of too rendered or too defined. So this whole thing is kind of in focus. Lady with a baby. Oh, look at the background. Very just pop, 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 pow. Whoa. Big brush strokes. More defined. Oh, I love the way he did, did the, uh, the light in this uh, backside of the lady. Ooh. Wow. Maybe this is based off of a film. Not sure. I believe this is Loki. <laughs> I think so. It looks like Loki. And I believe he hasn't been sleeping for some time right now. Um, whoa! Look at how we simplify the chainmail. So backlighting, um, very kind of hot here in the hair and in the side of the face. Sunset, sunrise. Um, excuse me. Oh, I think this is the last piece that we're going to review um, in his portfolio. Uh, this one actually is giving me the James Bond kind of feel. And I think it's because of the gold and the lady, right? Hot chick plus gold. I think that's the James Bond theme, right? <laughs> Hopefully. I love the kind of form here. Very heavy, very kind of clear, very clear shapes. It's not... It's not a very complicated like position or pose. 
but it's so well done. It, it's, it's kind of simple actually, but uh, the way it was blended and rendered, I mean, I think he did use a lot of the the mixer brush thing with, when it comes to the blending. But again, he didn't overdo it because you can actually see some areas where it's kind of sharp. Even this texture right here in the, the upper chest, right? It's kind of... um. It looks very natural. I love the way he showed this kind of a uh, chest muscle here, the kind of pec that's kind of um, coming off the boob, right? It's okay, yeah, coming off the actual like boob. Um, so there's a bit of like basic anatomy. Um, although the lats I feel could have been a bit rounder, right? Right, just just a little bit like this. Um, He did simplify the hand. I may, I think he did focus more on the face. Even the hair is very simplified. I love this kind of dash of white in the sideline of the face. Very, very majestic. Um, I love how he handled the shadows of the eye. Um, wow, it's super cool though. Oh, you can see the color dynamics here in the background. Some of that brush spacing. Even this kind of dress, I believe it's a dress. Um, it's just like one silhouette, right? And you can see actually see some blues and that's pretty much the only value change um, And maybe a few darker values here. Oh, I think she's kind of lifting up. Oh hoo -hoo -hoo, Bad bad. Yeah, she's kind of lifting up her um, Her uh, her package, right? But again, if you focus on the face, I think this is the I Think it did spend more time in this area. Um, you can see here with the, especially with the hand and the kind of elbow silhouette essentially but and even in terms of the contrast you can see more lighter spots like um more cuts more edge control here in terms of the definition of the eye this kind of where the eye meets the nose right and even in the boobs one boob from another very clear cut um i'm, I'm actually having trouble with my edges when it comes to that and uh, i think that's why my work tends to be or it looks kind of muddy because you know, let's go back to the fuck the dragon. I do like the dragon. Where the fuck is the dragon? Oh, no. Oh, for example, here you can see a lot of that edge control where some parts are kind of soft or blended out, and some parts are kind of like clear cut, especially when it comes to the head and body right here, and even the wing. And I think that's why it makes his work a bit more appealing because there is some kind of clarity, and and his work doesn't end up looking too muddy. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, so that's it for this uh, oof, review of uh, Greg Rutkowski's work. Um, I do recommend you. Um, um, I do recommend you follow him on ArtStation. Um, check out his YouTube channel. Buy something from his Gumroad. I think he does offer a lot when it comes to like brushes and tutorials. He does have a few tutorials. I have, I bought some of them. So. Which I need to watch, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy this episode of the Art Review Series. If you like the video, you know what to do. <laughs> uh, so keep painting, and stay free.